Thank you, Madam Speaker. Uh, look, I'm very pleased to rise and make a contribution on Youth Week because um, what we've come to see um, as adults recently is the enormous power of youth, the strength of youth and the, uh, the great antidote that collective youth action is proving to be in the epidemic of anxiety and depression, which so many uh, young people in Tasmania are affected by. Uh, the, the antidote of collective action has been proven through the, um, the history of human societies to be the one thing that, that can bring us together uh, when we feel overwhelmed with um, I environmental circumstances, um, social conditions, uh, climate threats, uh, to, to come together and uh, work as a community to find solutions and to take action, to, to take back power into people's own lives, to give people a sense of control. And the control that young people are so desperately trying to achieve is a sense of control at a planet which is uh, in, the, in the throes of runaway global warming. Uh, it has been created by the burning of fossil fuels. It is now at unsustainable levels. There is a cap. There is a limit, Madam Speaker. Uh, there is not uh, an unending amount of fossil fuels we can continue to burn. The scientists have given us numbers. They've given us dates. Young people are incredibly smart. Uh, they're incredibly connected. And they're aware of all this information. It may be that a lot of older dinosaurs uh, in the Liberal and Labor parties continue to put their head in the sands about the reality of what's happening uh, with global warming and the relationship between burning coal-fired power, gas-fired power and the warming of the planet. But young people, young people know that we cannot continue to put our heads in the sand. And it is the voice of one single young woman, Greta Thunberg in Sweden, who herself went and stood on Fridays by herself in the snow in Sweden and went on strike from school because it was the only thing that she could think of to do. And her single action, the step, the, the incredible strength of that young person has been an inspiration, a flame of hope and action for children, young people all across the planet. And now, today in Tasmania, we are all benefiting from that global collective action. More than 8,000 young people went on strike, stood outside here, um, despite the fact that not a single Liberal politician was uh, out there to speak to them. The Premier ran and hid from those voices. He wouldn't be seen. He couldn't be seen in public with the biggest strike ever, the biggest uh, march uh, that we can remember <clears throat> on Parliament lawns, so large that it spilled all around the streets around the Parliament House. Yet the Premier was too gutless to make time in his diary. He knew it was coming. He knew when it was. It was well forecast and he was too afraid, actually afraid, I think, to stand outside and to look into the eyes of the, those young people because their clarity is absolutely catalytic to experience. There's nothing else I can say for it. And Madam Speaker, I know you were there, uh, you hosted a wonderful event here in Parliament House which forecast the work that for young Tasmanians, on behalf of Tasmania, on behalf of Australia, really, they went as our ambassadors to the uh, con conference of the parties. Um, they were there. They spoke the truth about the relationship between the Adani coal mine and the warming of the planet. We must stop that mine. We will stop that mine. Yes, and will. Bob Brown is taking a cavalcade from Tasmania, the birthplace of the Greens. He yes. will be going, heading off from Tasmania, in his, little, in his little wagon, you know, electric cars, even fossil fueled cars, because we haven't got everywhere yet. It's not perfect, but hell, we're all going to get there together. And we're going to head up to the Carmichael mine, Madam Speaker. We're going to make sure that everyone in Australia understands, and young people will be there. 
young people will be leading the charge, Why? ending up at Parliament House, to say to the Liberal and the Labor parties, do not support this Adani coal mine, because we cannot, Madam Speaker, we cannot keep doing it. 96 per cent of young people in a, in a study are concerned about climate change. They know it's a serious problem. They're 70 per cent of them are disempowered. But the antidote, Madam, Speak Madam Speaker, is collective action of young people. Are the school strikes for climate? Are our children like um, Imogen Viner from, uh, from Signet, who has said uh, in a speech that she wrote and sent to all MPs, there is one more thing I see in the future, Prime Minister Morrison, one light amidst the gloom, the gloom, and that is young people themselves taking a stand for what they believe in, young people willing to sacrifice their education, a basic human right for action on climate change, young people taking an interest in politics, taking an interest in the workings of the world and making their mark, for we are the future. Mr Morrison. Well, Madam Speaker, I really hope that the Liberal Party and the Labor Party listen to the young people of Tasmania uh, when they make a decision about what their policies will be around coal, around electricity production, around gas, ar around reducing emissions, around protecting us from the bushfires that will come <coughs> next summer, that may indeed come on the East Coast next week, who knows, because we are in a forever changed climate world and young people uh, are going to be our voice for the future.